Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Week MRI. And this is a patient born in 1971. She's having pain on both the ulnar and radial sides of the wrist. No trauma, but just pain for a long time. And on this view here, we see the radius and ulna. So this is the ulnar side of the wrist, and we're going to look at that side first. And on this side, we notice one thing. The distal radius, the articular surface is here, and the distal ulna is about at the same level. Normally, normally the ulna will be a little bit shorter because there needs to be room for that triangular fibrocartilage to go through here. So this is a little bit too long. So it's a really mild positive ulnar variance. So if it's back a little, we'll call it a neutral variance. If it's really low down here, we'll call it a negative variance. If it's a little bit too far, we'll call it a positive. So this is a mildly positive ulnar variance. And when that happens, you can see that the triangular fibrocartilage is pushed distally and there's not enough room in here, not as much room as there should be. And this patient has that finding. They have prominent thinning of the um, central portion of the triangular fibrocartilage. The central disc here is really, really thin. Maybe the undersurface is partially torn. And also there's a little area of darkness in the base of the lunate bone here, that dark band here. This is uh, marrow edema. So we know that the triangular fibrocartilage is partially torn or thinned. And we see that the ulna is impacting with the base of the lunate bone, we call this ulnar abutment syndrome. If we go to the dorsal cut, we see that the dorsal band of the triangular fibrocartilage is intact. We see that central disc on this cut, you can see it's really thinned, and that's where it's impacting. And we go to the palmar portion, we see the palmar band is intact. Now we'll put up a stir sequence here. Here's the palmar band coming across, looks good. Now we'll go to the central cut, boom. So right here is that marrow edema. So they have ulnar abutment syndrome. The ulna is banging into that uh, base of the lunate bone, repetitive, repetitive impaction, and it's starting to tear the TFCC, but I don't see a definite full thickness perforation yet. You could argue there's a little bit of brightness here, maybe a little bit of fluid in the distorated ulnar joint, and maybe there is a little uh, focal perforation that we just can't see very well. Now the other thing we notice is off on the radial side. There's something abnormal over here. This is the abductor pollicis longus tendon. It's really thick and really gray. It starts here near the radial styloid, and then it goes distally. And so this um, is either de Quervain's tenosynovitis, which is typically more diffuse all the way to the base of the thumb. Usually it's really bad over here, so this is not quite typical. It's more localized. So it just may be a hypertrophic partial tear. And so in this case, I put it uh, both in there. But again, usually de Quervain's um, is along the radial side here. It involves the abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, these two ones that are next to each other. And usually it's very diffuse and goes all the way to the base and really foggy and crazy looking. Here this is much more uh, well-defined and more uh, localized here. But again, it still could be that, but again, it might be a hypertrophic partial tear, and I'm not sure I can definitely tell the difference. And that's it. So thank you very much. Hope you have a great day.